Hey there, boys and girls, and welcome to episode 123 of Sonic Boom TV, the opening of Nirvana's In Utero. Um, wasn't expecting to do an episode today, wasn't expecting to buy this today. Um, went to eat dinner and uh, passed the uh, Best Buy, and I remember some people were posting, I guess last week, I think it was last week, or maybe over the weekend, I don't remember. Uh, on Facebook that there was some uh, clearance sale going on at, sorry about that, uh, clearance sale going on at Best Buy. don't know what kind of prices they were talking about because I never saw anybody post anything like that. And I decided I would just go check it out while I was in the neighborhood. Um, and we have two Best Buys in my area that used to be really good, well one of them, used to be really good for music and movies and all that other stuff and not anymore they even had a music store in like a, a actual guitars and drums and all that stuff inside of one of the best buys here um, for a little while and just all went away and there's hardly any music there at all um i don't even know if they have cds and movies uh besides like the newest thing that comes out uh and then the the records are in a section with uh like phones and all that kind of stuff um and it's just kind of tucked away and it's got two little two little bins um and most of the time it's got some decent stuff at decent prices uh but uh you know i was thinking hey if i can get some uh bargain uh you know uh clearance stuff maybe i can get a couple things so i went in and i looked and there was nothing marked as far as being discounted um and so i'll just look through the bins anyway and there was probably like 10 records that i wanted um in there but you know of course i wasn't gonna buy 10 either way <clears throat> um you know unless they were like five bucks and maybe i would splurge on it or whatever uh but i went through and i saw this and i was like oh man i need that i don't ever see this record i don't know if this is a new pressing because it doesn't say uh, anything about 2022 or 2023 on the back. So I don't know how old this pressing is, um, but I usually see it, you know, when I see it, it's usually about 50 bucks. Um, and so uh, I was like, well, this one is $31.99, but I wanted to go ask, oop, there goes something. I wanted to go ask the uh, people at the, uh, at the Best Buy, I was like, is it true that there's a clearance on records? And the lady's like, I don't know. Um, I said, you know, it might have been last week. Um, and she's like, I don't know of any sale on anything like that. Um, but we started a new sale today, and these are not on it. So um, I was like, okay. And so she scanned this one just to check. And I had a, there was a White Stripes album, too, that I had. Uh, she scanned that one. But they had, like, the new Megadeth. They had, uh, you know, a couple REM albums that I want. Uh, they had... Uh, they had, just, they had about 10. I don't know. Um, so, but anyway, I was like, man, I never see this. If I pass it up, it might be a while before I see it again. Um, so, I decided to get it. You know, put it on the credit card. <laughs> uh, I don't suggest doing that. But, uh, anyway. So, I got it. Uh, I don't... It says Made in Germany on the back. So, I don't know if this is a American released one or a European released one. I, I don't know. Um, I have to look it up. There's a lot of different pressings of this. There's a lot of bootlegs of this. Uh, so, I don't know. But we're going to open it up. Don't know if this is colored vinyl or, or anything. It, it doesn't, you know, there's no stickers on it or anything to wait, to know. So, we'll find out together. Nirvana, in utero. Back cover. I um, always thought that cover was kind of creepy. That back cover. Uh, pull it out. We've got... Make sure there's nothing else in there. All right, nothing else. We've got a printed inner sleeve with band photo. Uh, and I lost my, my little light. Sorry. Uh, my extra light. I was wondering why it was getting weird. Uh, but we've got band photo, some lyrics and stuff. And then the other side is more band photos. Uh, these were in from the CD, I believe, because I remember this picture and this picture, uh, and I'm assuming those. Uh, I haven't looked at the CD in a while. 
Um, I listen to it every now and then, but I, I usually listen to it on MP3s. Uh, and we've just got black vinyl. So there's that. So this is the last, uh, not really the last Nirvana album I need as far as go on vinyl, but it's their last album album, like their official albums. Um, I don't see any date on that that either. Um, so I don't know what year this is. I'm going to have to look it up on Discogs after I do this. Uh, but, you know, they only had three official albums, and then there was some... Uh, live stuff, there was some B-sides kind of stuff, and a couple other things, and I'll show those in a minute, um, but this one took me a little while to get into it when it came out, um, at, at, when I first heard it, wasn't overly thrilled with it, I mean, I didn't dislike it, it just wasn't what I wanted it to be, I guess, uh, you know, I think we all go through that kind of stuff. Uh, but they have Servant Servant, Scentless Apprentice, Heart Shaped Box. I think Heart Shaped Box is the one that, that kind of threw me off. It just was like, eh, that doesn't sound like Nirvana. Uh, but then there was Rape Me, Francis Farmer. Uh, we'll have her Revenge on Seattle, Dumb, Dumb, Very Ape, Milk It, Penny Royalty, Radio Friendly, Unit Shifter, Tourette's, and All Apologies. So it turned out it was a really good album. Um, you know, it uh, just took me a while to get into it back in you know, 92, 93, whatever it came out, um, so there's 93 on here, so I, I guess that's the official date, um, and, uh, that, so, so, I got into Nirvana when Nevermind came out, of course, uh, I didn't know about Bleach at all, you know, most people didn't, people claim they know now, they probably didn't know, uh, you know, anything about Bleach until after Nirvana came out, and they ran out and got Bleach, and I did the same thing, um, but I found it at Walmart of all places, which was a weird thing back then for them to have that because uh, it it wasn't popular. It never got popular. Un Excuse me. It never got popular until the live album came out. Um, uh, the the MTV Unplugged when they mentioned it, when they mentioned about a girl, and then people went back and got got that. But I had already had it by then. Um, because as soon as I got, uh, uh, never mind, I bought Bleach, um, like right after. Um, but the weird part of it was I bought Nevermind twice as gifts for people because I already had most of it. I had, they played it on radio, like, uh, they were doing some kind of, uh, thing about Seattle bands or something. And they had, I had like five Pearl Jam songs. I had five or six Nirvana songs. And I had a couple other ones that I had on a tape that I was recording the show. And then I, once the show was over, I spliced them together to make like little tapes of just those those bands by themselves or whatever. Um, I used to do all that kind of crazy stuff back in the day. So I bought a copy for my cousin. I bought a copy for, I guess, my friend. I don't know. I don't remember who the other person was. But they both had the, uh, the extra stuff at the end, that weird... Uh, noise. I don't, it's got an official name to it now, but it was just like the secret song or whatever. Um, you had to like, wait like, I don't know, eight or ten minutes before you got to the secret thing, and it was just noise. Um, well, when I finally bought my version, like a month after I bought those two gift you know, CDs, it didn't have it. And I was like, oh man. I was like, and it's not a big deal, uh, and it's not worth any more than the other. Uh, but I was like, you know, I don't know what, what I was, like 18, 19 years old, something like that. And I used to write letters to record companies and stuff and see if I could get stuff. And it worked a lot of times. Um, you know, you get a couple free CDs or a couple free uh, cassettes or whatever. And I did it every once in a while. That's, you, know, you know, when I was in college, too, it was like, it was, it was kind of fun to do because you might get something in the mail, you know, and you weren't getting much mail in, in college unless you had girlfriend or something or somebody that was sending you stuff which i had a little bit of that going on too uh but you know it was bmg and columbia house and if i could find a record company or, or a band that would send me something that would be cool too um so anyway i decided to write geffen records see what happened and say hey you know i'm kind of upset that my version i bought this album three times the first two of them had this extra stuff that i gave away to some people and then my version didn't 
And the guy sent me back a letter, and it was like telling me to basically to chill out. And I was just doing it kind of as a joke anyway. I still had this little card somewhere with the, the note on it. Um, I, I come across it every once in a while, and I laugh. Um, but he, he was like telling me to basically chill out or whatever. And he sent me another copy, and it, it didn't have the extra stuff on it. But basically, the what it was is that that extra stuff was on the first pressing of the... Uh, of the album and then they took it off for whatever reason i don't know if they were just trying to i don't know why they would take it off it doesn't make any sense that they did but they did and like a lot of versions don't have it um i think maybe now they might go back and have it on there i don't know but long story short we had a music store that opened up across the street from the campus and they sold a lot of uh used cds and they sold uh you know some new stuff but it was real weird. They always had like young kids in there that I don't know that they were should have been in there like by themselves. They looked like runaways basically. It was it was kind of a shady place. And I'm pretty sure it got shut down because it wasn't there very long. But you go in there and they had these those hairless cats. They had like ten of them running around in there, and they all had piercings in their ears and stuff. It was it was a real creepy kind of place. But they had good CDs, so I'd go in there every once in a while. And the one day I went, they had they had about three or four Nirvana CDs in there. And I already had the one, you know, without it. And I asked the guy, because I didn't, there was no way to tell really what anything was worth back then. It was just kind of rumored to be worth something, which I think it's, it's like, I think it's five bucks right now. Uh, so, But uh, I told a guy, I said, can I listen to these uh, Nirvana CDs? He's like, well, why do you want to listen to, to all of them? And I was like, well, I, I need to check something. And, I, and he was like, okay. So he goes, he takes him behind the counter and there's, you know, the, the stored CD player. I said, go to the last song and, you know, let it play. Um, you can you can kind of fast forward through the song if you want to, to get to the end of it and let me see if it still plays. And he goes through the first one, it doesn't play. He goes through the second one, it doesn't play. Now, on the last, I think it was the third one was the last one. He plays it and it's a little longer. And um, and, and I noticed it and I said, okay, that's it. That's, that's the one I want. And he doesn't let it play any longer because he would have no, eventually known that it was another song on it. And he ejects the CD immediately and hands it to me. And uh, and so uh, he said, because I guess he didn't even notice that it was still playing. And uh, he, uh, he hands it to me and he said, why do you want that one? And I said, I'll tell you after I buy it because <laughs> they were like three or four bucks or something like that. And, uh, and I was thinking back then that, oh, this one's worth more because it's the original. Uh, and I knew that it was like however many pressed, I don't remember. Uh, and I bought it and then I told him, he was like, son of a gun, I could have charged you $25 for that or something. I was like, you probably could have, and I probably would have paid it, uh, back then. I wouldn't do it now, but, uh, but anyway, so I've got that. Uh, and, and so after that, uh. I just was kind of a, you know, a Nirvana fan, like everybody else. I mean, everybody loved them. Not everybody, I'm not going to say that, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of people now that act like they, they hated all that stuff. And I didn't really know anybody in college, uh, you know, or from, you know, back home when I, no, I'm still not far from home, but, but, you know, the people I knew from high school and stuff, I didn't know anybody that wasn't really into Nirvana um, and, and the grunge thing. Everybody's like, oh, I hate grunge or whatever. You know, grunge killed everything and this and that, but grunge didn't do anything. Uh, grunge, grunge did change the, what was popular. The grunge died like in two years. It wasn't around. I mean, it was all those bands that were grunge when, on their first releases, like Nirvana and you could say Pearl Jam wasn't, but they I think they were on their first two albums probably. Uh, Soundgarden, all them, they all changed. Like, you know, within two, two or three years, they were all different and... and and then they all kind of faded out because most of them changed. Um, some of them are still around, like Pearl Jam's still around, but they don't sound anything like they did on Ten or uh, or Versus or you know Vitalogy, whatever. All those the first couple, they were different than they are now. They're more of a just a regular kind of rock band now than than they were anything. But anyway, I digress, right? Uh, so, well, I'm gonna just go through what I I've co collected of Nirvana. I'll start with the CDs. And uh, the records are mostly the same. I, I filled up, uh, you know, like I said, I completed the regular albums collection. I really only need 
I think one thing that I really want uh, on record, and then after that I might be complete, you know, as far as I'm concerned, unless they come out with something, you know, new. But we got Bleach. Uh, bought that one, like I said, at Walmart. I've got, of course, I've got the two copies of Nevermind. I don't know which one is is the extended one and which one is not because they don't say on the backs they just go to song 12 so one of these is the uh the one and one of them is not the one <laughs> uh and we've got i bought the lithium single and the reason i bought the lithium single is well it had uh been a sun live and curmudgeon uh which, which was previously unreleased at the time on this, but at the time, and maybe still to this day, um, the only place you could get the lyrics, because I don't know if it's on the record or not, was this single. It has the lyrics to Nevermind's album, because people didn't know what he was saying in, uh, in, in, uh, in Smells Like Teen Spirit. Um, and so I guess they were like, oh, and we got to put this out some kind of way, so uh, you know, they they figured they'd I guess maximize their uh, efforts and put it on something different, so people would have to buy this um, instead of repressing the CD. Uh, so it says compact disc maxi single includes complete lyrics to every song on Nevermind. I don't know if you guys can see that, kind of small, but that's that. So this one I used to listen to this like crazy. There's three songs and I loved it and and. It was, you know, Vienna Sun was was always a, one of my favorites, and uh, Curmudgeon was good too. So, got that. Then, of course, we have In Utero, uh, and uh, the pictures on the inside are color. It looks like let's, let's pull it out. Might as well, it's, you know, we're watching the video. We're watching the video. So we've got, yeah, we've got all these pictures. See, there's more pictures in this than there are in the the record but then we've got color stuff here that they omitted from the record that i just got it's okay it's okay we can live with that um then we've got incesticide i think this is probably the best nirvana ever like it, it, this uh, this is a b-sides album um you know got dive sliver stain been a sun turn around molly's lips Son of a Gun, uh, New Wave Poly, Beeswax, Downer, Mexican Seafood, Hairspray Queen, Aero Zeppelin, Big Long Now, and Aneurysm. Um, it's, the case is all cracked up, but this is by far my favorite um, Nirvana album. Um, you know, it's Dive, Sliver, Stain, Ben a Sun, Turn Around, Molly's Lips. I mean, those that, the opening six are, are, are all bangers, as they say. Um, and I even had a, a ferret back in the day that I named Molly, and I named it after that song because Molly used to jump on you and put her, you know, stick her face right on your nose and lick it. That, so that was it. Kiss, kiss Molly's lips. I don't know if ferrets have lips. Then my friend made me some uh, some bootleg stuff here, and I had the Nirvana outsesticide. See, uh, I don't even know all the songs on this. I don't know what's on all that's on there. Um, and he also made a, a uh, CD of Nirvana. To take it out of the case. Oh, no, you wrote it on here. Uh, Nirvana's Live in Rome, February 22nd, 1994. I don't know where he got that. Um, that might have been like early Napster or something. And he's got the songs written on there. Uh all that stuff. Um, so that's, you know, I haven't listened to it in a long time. Uh, it says Niagara in grave font written on the side of it. I don't know what that means. Um, but, you know, those at the time were kind of rare because, you know, they were bootleg and it wasn't like now. I think you can actually buy those uh, as records or CDs now. Um, and, you know, whatever. Then we've got MTV Unplugged. Uh, made in Canada on that one. Uh and we got from the muddy banks of the Wishka 
that's the that's the next one I want to I want on vinyl. If I get this on vinyl, then I don't need anymore. And there was a sticker hype sticker that somehow I kept. I stuck it on the back because uh, a lot of the hype stickers on CDs I didn't keep, uh, or I cut them out and stuck them on something. Sometimes if they had a tray on the inside, a clear one, I cut it out and stuck it inside the tray. Um, 16 live performances recorded between 1989 and 1994. So I want that one on a record if I can get it. I think it's available. Um, I'm not sure. Then we've got Nirvana, Sliver of the Best of the Box. Uh, and this one, I believe is one CD. It might be two. Oh, there's a, look, I stuck a hype sticker on the inside right there. That one says, 19 favorites from With the Lights Out plus three previously unreleased tracks. Um, and that's why I got it for those three previously unreleased tracks. Um, and I don't know which those were. Uh, spank, it looks like Spank Through, Sappy, and Come As You Are. And I can't, the, the font is in yellow and I can't read it in this light. Uh, but, you know, there's three. So I got that mainly because they had three extra tracks. Um, because I already got the other thing. And then the Nirvana, oh, here's one, I have a hype sticker right here. Uh, Nirvana with the crack case and the tape on it. I don't know who put the tape on it, but uh, that is the uh, basically the greatest hits type thing. Um, and it says 14 classic songs newly mastered featuring the previously unreleased You Know You're Right. And I really like that song too, You Know You're Right. Um, so I'm glad that this did get released. Um, you know, everything else on it is just basically this the regular best of kind of stuff that cover but i also already had this now this is uh with the lights out nirvana uh it is four cds it opens up into that um the funny thing about this was when it came out, I don't know how much it was. I know it was at least 50 bucks, but I think it was like closer to 75 And the one thing I knew about Walmart, whenever they got new CDs, the first batch they got was usually on sale. Don't know why. Uh, but I went to the store. My friend was looking for this. And I said, I think they got it at Walmart. I'll go check for you. Um, because... We worked, we worked together or something, and I was getting off before him or whatever. And I went over there to Walmart, and they had it. Well, they had like five copies of it. And they, the other ones were 50, somewhere in between 50 and $75, whatever it was, uh, originally. And they had them, but they had this one that was like $22. And so... I know he wanted it, but I wanted it too. I just didn't want it enough to pay all, you know, the ridiculous amount. And I bought it. <laughs> I went back over to our store. And I said, look, man, I got it. And he goes, is that for me? And I'm like, no. <laughs> I said, I got it for like 22 bucks. And he was dying. And I said, they only had one that was this price. All the other ones had a different price tag on it. Uh, I said, they're, they got like five of them, you know, left over there. They're between 50 and whatever it was uh you know and and so i don't know if he went and bought it or not but he was mad at me because i bought it for this you know for my price but it is what it is and uh you know if he if he'd have been uh he wouldn't have said anything and he would just went the next day he probably would have got it so anyway so that's my cds for my nirvana collection now for my records I picked up most of these in the, in the last two years, I guess it was, because uh, the uh, I got them, most of them, probably at Walmart or Target, I don't know, uh, and they all sound good, um, you know, people like to brag on those stores, but they are good, uh, so we got Nirvana's Bleach uh, with the hype sticker, it says Nirvana's debut album remastered from the original tapes. Coupon for free download of HIQ MP3s of entire album. I don't know if I ever did that. I already had, I already had it though. So this one was only seventeen ninety seven when I bought it. Great deal. That one came from Walmart. Uh, then I've got again two different versions of Nevermind. 
And the reason for this is this is the Target Silver Vinyl Edition. This one is the Target uh, Special Edition, I guess you would call it. Uh, and it had the uh, Endless Nameless uh, single, 45. Uh, which also has even in his youth an aneurysm on it um, and I wanted that and so I got that as a birthday present to myself uh, two years ago I guess uh, but uh, so you know I, I kind of take turns listening to whatever one I think this one is just black vinyl yeah this one's just, this one's black vinyl the other one's silver vinyl um, there is a hype sticker somewhere in in here uh, I don't know what I do with it Maybe not. Maybe there is. Maybe there isn't. Oh, yeah. Here it is. I always keep the little plastic thing with it. I don't even cut them out anymore. Uh, but we've got, you know, whatever that says. Oops. Is it upside down? It's upside down. Uh, Nirvana 30th Anniversary Edition. Never mind Limited Edition. 7-inch and all that stuff. Um, so, yeah. I, I wanted it mostly for that and... Like I said, it was my birthday, so I said, you know what, I'll pay whatever the price was. Doesn't have a price tag on this anymore, so I don't know. Uh, but uh, happy to have it in my collection. Okay, so then, of course, I got this one. And I got a good deal from it because my friend who used to own a record store, uh, she, uh, she had it in, um, and I think I paid maybe... In between 20 and 30 for it. Um, and it was going for a lot more than that. I think, I think it still goes for a lot more than that. Um, uh, but this is, you know, this is the one that made me happy. I, I listened to this so many times when I when I got it. Oh, it was great. Um, and then, of course, today if we saw that I got the In Utero. Um, and then, lastly, well, not lastly, uh, have the Target... Uh, exclusive opaque purple vinyl unplugged in New York version. Um, I think Walmart did a version as well and I think there's a record store maybe version but it's all good. Then the greatest hits thing. Um, that was a Walmart exclusive color. Smoke gray 2397 on that one so not bad. Uh, and then the last thing I have like I said I want to get from the Muddy Banks of the Wishka and maybe maybe the sliver if it's available. I don't know if slivers of the the sliver best of the box. I want to get that. So these two are the ones I want to get on vinyl. And once I get if I can get those on vinyl, if they even exist, I know I know from Muddy Banks does. I don't know about sliver. Um, once I get those, I'll pretty much be done with anything I need for Nirvana, um, unless I find they put out something new. Some you know rarities or whatever um but the last thing i do have and i bought this mainly because the, i love the picture on the on the cover uh and it's nirvana damage mono more uh and it's um it says it's a collection of live and radio recordings from 1989 through 1994 i believe these are songs from the access the side uh album uh i think there were like three outsets the sides uh and uh <laughs> bootlegs and I, I believe these are songs from that um it has dumb there's something called dementia seven raunch ola white lace and strange anorexist heartbreaker floyd the Bar barber mrs butterworth downer help me i'm hungry and endless nameless um and i don't know that like i think some of these song titles are the wrong thing i think there are other songs i haven't listened to this in a while um kind of cool Kind of cool looking uh, label. This one's oh, it's cool too, but I don't know what the heck, what way it goes. I don't know what it is. Uh, but it's it's this kind of green uh, swirly vinyl. Found that at a, at a weird store too. There's a store called Sisters in Christ, and I think it used to be a religious bookstore at one point, and somebody bought it and made it into a like a, a kind of an underground uh, record store and they don't have a whole lot in there but what they do have is like a lot of like very indie 
bands. Uh, oh, this is 1989 for this. Uh, they have uh, a lot of local stuff. That's that's uh, you know punk and hardcore and and just underground stuff. Nothing that you're really ever going to hear anywhere on the radio for sure. Um, and they had this. Well, I think this is the only Nirvana album they had in there, um, which I was surprised from based on whatever else they had. Um, but I haven't been back there in in years. Since I bought that, I haven't been back there. So um, I, I don't know. It was a good store, um, you know, but it, it just, there wasn't enough for me to go back because unless I'm in the mood to buy stuff that's, you know, underground stuff that nobody knows about, uh, and I find enough of that at, at places like Euclid Records and stuff like that. So, it you know, I don't go there much. But anyway, that was my Nirvana collection. Um, I don't have anything on cassette by them um, that, I, that I know of. I might have a might have a cassette single uh, now I'm thinking about it, but um, I don't know. Um, but th that's probably one of the uh, bands that I'm most complete on, I think, uh, you know, uh, in some format or another. Um I think they have a couple other collections they put out, maybe a couple other live things um, that weren't popular. Um, you know, and I know there's plenty of bootlegs up uh, there. I've seen some stuff that uh, I, I was tempted to buy. Like there's one like Saturday Night Live uh, recordings or something like that from I think they were on Saturday Night Live twice. Um, so that would give you like four songs. So I don't know if that's a whole if there's a whole album worth of that or not. Uh, but uh, but anyway, that's my Nirvana collection. Um, wasn't expecting to get in utero, but I will be listening to that tomorrow morning uh, when I get up and start working. Um, so uh, that's it. Talk to you guys later.